If you download the latest uh, alpha branch of Blender 4.3, you'll notice that there are new grease pencil features in Blender, and I'm just going to quickly go through them here. So let's add in a stroke quickly. And initially nothing looks different from the previous versions of Blender, apart from there's a new UI in draw mode and some new brushes. But if we go into the modifiers tab, we can actually add in a geometry nodes modifier. And now if I go into geometry nodes and hit new, you'll see immediately in the spreadsheet that there's this new data type that we haven't had before called grease pencil. And as a subtype, we have layers and these layers reference whatever is in our grease pencil data. So lines of color, you can see if I change the names, they update in the spreadsheet. And we also have a couple of new nodes. So if I search for grease pencil, you see we can now convert grease pencil to curves, which will remove the sort of rendering of the grease pencil. And there's a little tick box here for uh, converting layers to instances. And that does exactly what it says. It basically separates out the color pass and the line pass, or however many layers you have, into their own curve instances. Uh, this could be useful for some applications. I haven't really found a use for it yet though, personally. Uh, I'm going to untick this and convert these to regular curves. So now all the points of the grease pencil have become curve points and we have one spline. So now what can we do with this? Any operation we could normally do in geometry node. So I'm just going to run this quickly through a curve to mesh node and I'm just going to plug in a circle as a profile curve. And you can see what we get is this sort of tubular effect along the curve. So if I go into draw mode, you can see I can now draw things in grease pencil that become 3D objects in real time. And you can see that we also inherit the thickness attribute from the grease pencil curve. This is passed through into the um, curve. And you see we also have a couple of other bits of information if you look in the actual uh, spreadsheet at the attributes. We have radi radius, opacity, and uh, delta time, which all come from the grease pencil. Now back in the layout tab to demonstrate what this might be used for, I'm going to actually just replace this node group with our fairy lights node group from my previous video to show you that um, we can in fact use any curve based node group on grease pencil now and it will work as normal. Um, because in fact you don't actually need this grease pencil to curves node, you can do the conversion implicitly. I like to just have this in to make it a bit more clear what's going on. And you can see if we don't do that, the geometry we create is actually instance. It's not real geometry, so it's definitely good to include this node. Now, let me go ahead and append in my very light node group. And if I apply that here, you can see now wherever we have a grease pencil stroke, we run the fairy light generator. So that's very, very cool. And this would be pretty nice if I was, say, dressing this onto an actual Christmas tree. I could just draw in grease pencil in real time. And we could use uh, curves and draw with curves before, but we had nowhere near as much control as we do with grease pencil, where we can delete out little bits with the eraser tool and um, draw in true 3D with, you know, a drawing tablet and that kind of thing. Now, there's another little way I've been using this new feature of Grease Pencil and that's actually for claymation type work. So if I load up my demo file for that, you can see that these objects just appear to be regular objects but they're actually generated based on Grease Pencil strokes. So as I draw the objects get filled in and turned into clay which is very very cool so it makes it very easy to do claymation type work and because this is a grease pencil object we can animate the uh, the clay between frames so as I scrub through you can see I just let this ball move obviously I did this with a mouse in about two seconds but if you spent time animating you can imagine making something that looks pretty nice with this but to quickly take you through this node tree, I'll show you first the modifier, which just has a control for the thickness of the clay. And then in the geometry nodes uh, workspace, you can see what I'm doing is first converting them to a curve with our new node, then converting the curves to a meshes to store the island index. So for each uh, separate piece of geometry is going to have its own island index. And that will be useful in a second when we convert this back to a curve set it cyclic to join the ends and then fill curve with the fill curve node and with the group ID 
that just cleans everything up a little bit. It doesn't get as confused as what happens um, between the intersections. And then I just extrude this out, join it with the original, merge by distance, and then convert to a volume, and then back to a mesh, and that just removes any intersections. Then this is really jagged, uh, so I use a set position with a position and throw a blur attribute. It's a nice little smoothing technique in geometry nodes. And then applying some displacement, shading smooth, and giving the clay material. And all the clay material is, is just a simple set of noise textures. Just a noise for the bump and a noise for the colour. And that's really as simple as it as it is to make clay now in Grease Pencil 3.0, but you can imagine how as you develop different node groups you could add them to the asset browser, or you could potentially just download them online to save you the hassle, and then you can go ahead and animate in clay in real time and see it all rendered nicely in Eevee. There really is nothing else quite like it, it's very cool. But yeah, I hope this sort of inspired you to go and try out the new Grease Pencil features and make some cool node groups. And I'll see you in the next video.